You all have a smartphone. So I'm about to show you the 35 greatest tricks ever to be able to make the most out of it. And don't worry, I'm not about to tell you to squeeze toothpaste all over your screen to repair it. These are the absolute top tier real life hacks that I actually use, from the time saving to the life changing. Okay, if you ever listen to music or TV shows before bed, then use a sleep timer. You can do this on any smartphone, but just to show you on an iPhone, you open the clock, you enter the timer section, and then you use the when timer ends menu to select stop playing. It'll just mean that you can have the music on while you can still hear it, but then as soon as you drift off to sleep and you no longer need the sound on, you can just have a better quality sleep in silence. And on that note, I've also found that if you are going to watch something just before bed, then a much more comfortable way of doing it is to have your smartphone on an arm. It means that, well, for starters, you don't have to use your own arm, and so you can just focus on trying to get to sleep, and also it allows you to keep your neck at a less weird angle, which is just less strenuous. So combine this with the sleep timer that we just talked about, and you can have a much more worry-free bedtime experience. When you're registering your fingerprint to be able to unlock your phone, instead of registering it once like your phone asks you to, do it twice. And on that second time, make sure that you're getting every single nook and cranny of your finger. Your phone will detect these as two separate fingerprints, meaning that when you're trying to next get into your phone, it'll be much more likely to match your current print against at least one of those two saved prints. If you have a whole load of cables for all your various different gadgets, then you can use cable ties to link them all together, organizer clips to keep the ends uniform and consistent, and then a cable box to store all the big bulky wiring that's trailing across your floor. You can very quickly go from something like this to something like this. And if you want to take this to the next level, then you can also swap out all of your various different power bricks, which might be 5 watt or 10 watt or maybe even 20 watt chargers, for just one high-end 100 watt plus charger that can take care of everything. Okay, time for a camera lightning round. Five of my absolute favorite tricks for photos. The first one being burst mode. Your phone has it use it. On an iPhone, you hold down the shutter button and then drag it to the left. On a Samsung, you just hold the volume down button and off it goes. The point is, if you're ever about to experience something that cannot be repeated, then capturing 20 photos a second is a pretty good way of making sure you don't miss it. If you're trying to capture a screenshot of an entire page, then instead of taking 50 separate screenshots and just scrolling down a little bit each time, just take one screenshot and select full page capture to take the entire web page in one go. You can do a similar thing on Samsungs too by just clicking this downward arrow after capturing. Now, if you're a bit of a tinkerer, then it's also worth playing around with the Shortcuts or the Routines app, depending on which phone you have. It basically allows you to give custom commands to your phone, which can make it react to any input you give it. So just for example, I've got a little command here, which means that every time I say the word snap, my iPhone, without even needing to open up the camera app, can snap a silent photo and immediately save it to the Recents folder. If you ever see someone that looks just really trendy and you decide that you want to recreate their outfit, then all you need to do is to head to the Google app, open up Google Lens, and just take a photo of it. This feature did start off pretty rough, but I think you'd be surprised at how capable it's now become. It is far easier than trying to describe what you're seeing in written language. And then the single most important trick for your camera is to turn grid lines on and then use those grid lines to execute the rule of two thirds. It's actually very simple. When you turn these grid lines on, it'll always create four lines across your screen, two going down, two going across. And this will lead you to four power points. Yeah, not that kind of power point. Four points within your frame in which it's a good idea to position your point of interest. These are the points for which your subject will still look aesthetically pleasing, but just not as static and as lifeless as if you always keep everything in the middle all the time. So let's just say I'm taking a photo of Simba, then instead of me winging it and just aimlessly taking photo after photo and seeing which one turns out right, if I position his eye, which I've decided is going to be the focal point of the image, within that top right power point, check how much nicer it turns out. Okay, moving on from photos then. Let's be honest, we all use our phones in the bathroom. But if you want the absolute best solution to watching TV shows while having a shower, then a shower cage might well be the way to go. I have one installed in my bathroom, and it basically means that you can have your phone at the perfect height, you can keep it dry as the cage is waterproof, and you can even rotate it 90 degrees to consume different types of content. I will say that trying to use the touchscreen while the cage is wet is a bit hit or miss, but if you set up the right voice commands, you will never need to. So you know how on YouTube there's this watch later feature for when you want to make sure that you don't miss something that looks really juicy, but also when you don't quite have the time or energy to watch it right away. 
Well, if you use the app Pocket, then it can act as your watch later or read later list, but across every single one of your applications. Any article you find or web page you come across, you just share it to Pocket, and this app will keep an offline version of that article without any ads in a clean, simple format tailored to reading, and it can even read the page back to you. Number 23 is something that, if you spend five minutes setting up now, will save you hours of your time in the future. So, what you need to do is to figure out the top 10 or so things that you tend to type often into your phone. It could be your phone number, your email address, your full name, all that kind of stuff. And now, if you dive into your phone's text replacement settings, you can make your device able to immediately retrieve these longer outputs as soon as you type in a couple of letters as an input. So, for example, I've set mine such that any time I type in the letters EM, my phone knows that that's short for email and so my full email address will autofill automatically. You'll never feel like you need this one, and to be honest, I hope that you don't, but it's always super worth setting up your emergency settings. You just have to fill in your details once, and then if anything ever happens to you with just a super simple command, like a triple tap of the power button or a swipe, you'll be able to trigger an emergency mode, where your phone will display your full medical history to everyone around you, it'll turn on its location and internet to make you reachable, it'll call your emergency contacts, and also immediately ping your location to them. When you're typing out a message using Apple Keyboard or Gboard, and you find that you want to use a symbol or a number, then instead of clicking the symbol button, you can instead hold it, which will allow you to select your symbol and then immediately return back to the normal keyboard to carry on typing. I just saved you like half a second out of your day. So if you are enjoying this video, then a sub to the channel would be timeless. Okay, 20 to go. And just before my top 10 absolute favorite life hacks, I wanted to give you five specifically for Android and five specifically for Apple. Because some of the coolest things that you can do on your smartphone, they are exclusive to each operating system. So, you know how AirDrop, this instant seamless file transfer, is one of the greatest advantages that iOS has, right? Well, if you download the Snapdrop app, then just like AirDrop, it can create a wireless tunnel between two of your Android, Mac, or even Windows devices to send and receive files effortlessly. If you're the kind of person who tends to accidentally swipe away notifications that you actually wanted to read, then just head to settings and find notification log or notification history. Enable it, and from now on, this menu will show you every notification you've ever received. It even means that you can read WhatsApp messages that the sender then later decided to delete, because the contents of those messages were stored in the notification itself. If you want to find out where your Android phone is, just Google it. <laughs> I'm not kidding. The benefit of using software that's made by Google themselves is that your Google search can also retrieve data from your personal Google profile, thus allowing you to get pinpoint directions to your device, providing that you've enabled the feature first on your phone. Even cooler than that though, if you're ever unsure of what a song that you hear is called, you can just ask Google Assistant. And I should be very clear here, I am not talking about something like Shazam, which requires the full complete track to be playing for it to be identified. You can sing it, you can hum what you remember of it, you can even whistle it and it will tell you. I actually tested it in one of our Shorts channel videos and it's good, like shockingly good. And then my single most underrated Android feature it's actually the photo gallery. It didn't used to be this way. The photo gallery used to be a very simple app that just stored your photos. But in the last few years, Google, Xiaomi, Samsung, these companies have pumped their gallery apps chock full of some of the most intelligent software you can find on the entire platform. I'll give you a few examples. So if you have a Samsung phone and you open up a photo in your gallery, you can, with one tap, remaster it, using artificial intelligence to reduce grain, balance colors, and even upscale its internal resolution. You can download photos from the internet or pull up a shot taken 15 years ago and still add a realistic portrait mode effect to it. And you can even take photos of screens or things inside glass cabinets and then remove the reflections. Google's phones can magically erase almost anything you want. Xiaomi's can completely swap out the entire sky within a shot. You get the idea. It is worth exploring your gallery features. All right, time for our iPhone exclusives. When a piece of text is selected on iOS, you know how the actual menu for copy and pasting is a bit naff? Well, don't use it. You can instead just swipe in with three fingers to copy and swipe out with three fingers to paste that same text. When you're typing, you can also save yourself a few well, microseconds by holding the dot on your keyboard to quickly bring up your URL shortcuts. You can create a PDF in literally three seconds by holding down on the Notes app and clicking Scan Document. Just take a quick photo of whatever you want to import, and that is it. You don't need to do anything else. I've actually just got one of these Polaroid type cameras, and this is the quickest way to convert its photos into an organized set of digital files. 
Okay, if you ever wanted to organize your iPhone, then you can actually pick up multiple apps at the same time by just holding down on your wallpaper to enter the edit home screen mode, and then selecting one app, and then just tapping any extra apps that you want to add to the same pile so that you can carry them all together in one go. All right, let me set the scene for this last iPhone one. You're at a party, you've got the playlist blasting out, everyone's having a great time, and you just want to capture the moment. So you take out your iPhone, you start recording a quick video, until you suddenly realize the music stopped. Every face turns to look at you, you have killed the entire mood. I've done this at least like 10 times. <laughs> because by default, the iPhone cannot record video at the same time as playing music. But worry no more. For if instead of opening up the camera on video mode, you instead open it up on photo mode and take your video by just holding down that photo button, your music will carry on playing uninterrupted. Right, now for my top 10 straight up god tier smartphone tricks. Number 10 being to use your phone on dark mode. It is a simple one, but there's no reason why you shouldn't. It doesn't affect your functionality at all, but it can increase your battery life by up to 25%. Thanks to your screen being able to switch off its pixels when they're black, as opposed to having to shine them at full power when they're displaying white. Speaking of which, if you're ever trying to get somewhere but you're low on battery, then instead of carrying on using your phone for turn-by-turn -turn based navigation, just take a screenshot of what the Maps app is telling you and use that while you're on airplane mode. And if you're ever on your way to see someone and you want them to know your estimated time of arrival, then instead of texting them 30 times with updates every single time you get stuck in traffic, you can just head to Google Maps, start navigation, swipe up, and then click Share Trip Progress. The other person will be able to see not just where you are now, but will also be able to access a continuously updating ETA right up until the point where you arrive. If you're ever parking your car in one of those enormous parking lots, which look exactly the same from every angle, then use the Find My Parked Car app, which allows you to place a virtual marker at the exact coordinates that your car is left at. You know, so you can actually find it later. <laughs> Number six. So a couple of years ago, after days of continuous heavy rainfall, I had a massive power cut across the entire house. Like fridges stopped working, appliances stopped working, all the lights stopped working. And during this time, the way I actually managed to get around it was by placing my phone flat on a table, turning the torch on, and then placing a full bottle of water on top of it. This scatters the otherwise focused light, creating a DIY lamp in seconds. Okay, whenever I'm about to take a phone call while I'm on the go, and I know that my signal could get a little iffy, then just before I connect, I turn on airplane mode, give it about 10 seconds, and then turn off airplane mode, which just gives my phone the chance to reconnect to the closest cell tower for the most stable signal. If anyone ever asks you for the measurement of something, this literally happened to me the other day with someone who wanted this bike, then instead of getting out the tape measure and then trying to describe exactly what part of this object corresponds to which measurement you've taken, just open the AR measure app, drop a few dots around the object, take a photo and send that to them. A picture tells way more than words ever will. At number three though, here is one that I've started using all the time, putting my phone on monochrome mode. See, one of the surprising reasons why your smartphone can be just so incredibly distracting is color. Applications are subtly using color all the time to try and grab your attention. Like the red that you see on notification dots, for example, is actually chosen to stimulate the parts of our brain associated with danger and therefore trigger an automatic response to click. And so putting your phone into monochrome mode, which is usually found in accessibility settings, helps you to eliminate these distractions and just regain control. It basically makes everything that you do on your phone Boring, but that's kind of the point. And this ties in beautifully with number two, the shortcut hack. See, every modern smartphone has a power button and thus also has the ability to double or triple tap to execute further commands of your choosing. So on my iPhone, for example, one tap of the power button turns the screen on or off, two taps opens up Apple Pay to quickly buy things, and then three taps switches me in and out of monochrome mode for when I need to edit photos or indulge in some prime YouTube content. But even more pivotal than this is how to properly secure your accounts. There's a few different tiers you can go for, but as I've learned the hard way, higher is better. So at the bottom level, you can just set a simple password that's something relatable. Let's say the name of your dog. Please never do this. You can get better by creating a random password. Let's just say a bunch of random special characters thrown together. This is not disastrous, but still not great on its own. The minimum level of security that I would recommend putting on any account that you value is SMS two-factor authentication, which is where you receive a text when you log in to confirm that it is actually you doing the logging in. It might sound like a faff, but you only have to do it once and then you can just set the device that you're logging in from as a trusted device and you never have to do it again. But if you want to be absolutely 
watertight, then I would recommend two-factor authentication, but using an authenticator app instead of SMS. The reason being that if you do do it this way, then the code you get is specifically tied to one of your already trusted devices, as opposed to it being tied to your SIM card, which can leave you open to SIM swapping attacks. There's no sponsor on this video, so I'll just use this opportunity to say that if you do like how I'm trying to cram as much content as possible into a video that's not stupidly long, then do consider subscribing, it would be amazing. To check out the Samsung smartphone scandal recently, that video is here, or to see how a 2022 mid-ranger stacks up with a 2020 flagship, that video is here. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.